always been a big fan of analog technology. Um, and one of those pieces of tech that I've always really wanted is a acoustic coupler, which is basically a, an old school modem. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't make them anymore. Uh, you can find used ones on eBay, but you have to make sure you have the right ports and some funky wires and you, I don't know what the quality is. So I went ahead and decided to make my own. <laughs> I 3D printed my own and then I built a bolt and board system using mini modem. And then I gave a talk about it to the local DEF CON group here in Omaha. And that's what the majority of this video is. And I'll demonstrate the acoustic coupler. So real quick, the whole reason for this and why people would use this kind of technology still today is for either circumventing internet surveillance. Um, so if you're in a country that monitors the internet, this would be a good thing to have. It's also a good thing to have in some disaster and doomsday scenarios. Um, if the internet goes down, but the telephone lines are still functional, um, then you can use this. It's also good for last mile communication. So if you're in a, like a third world country or something and they have a telephone system up but don't have the infrastructure for internet, you could still make a basic interconnect, internet connection with this. So the fantasy I've always had is to be able to do ultrasonic over the telephone. So that way you wouldn't be able to hear, hear it with the human ear if you were to tap into it. But as I'll highlight, that's not really possible over the phone lines. So the realistic goal I was shooting for is about 300 BPS um, with minimal typos. Um, most of the acoustic couplers, like you see in this picture, are capable of 300 BPS. So kind of a quick science lesson um, to help you understand the options that are in mini modem. Uh, there's a difference between amplitude shift keying and frequency shift keying, where the amplitude just kind of uh, adjusts the volume of the signal to symbolize ones and zeros. While with frequency shift keying, it's changing the frequency of the signal. Um, here's some screenshots from GQRX with radio signals. And so in an amplitude modulated signal, you'll just see the one peak. But with the frequency modulated, you'll see the two peaks with a basic FSK signal, you'll see the two peaks, and that represents the two frequencies that it's bouncing between. But mini modem uses audio FSK. Um, but FS, FSK in general will consist of a mark and a space frequency. And those are just terms for the two peaks. And then there's some other terms, I won't get into this too much. Um, the deviation from the center frequency and whatnot and the shift and the bandwidth and you can use that to help you know when you s decide what mark and space frequency you want to use and you don't want to use the default values you'd have to consider some of this math in there but so far I found the defaults to work just fine so mini modem uses the audio shift keying so it's changing the frequency of certain audio waves and usually it's going to be in this high range here. What I mentioned earlier that you can't do ultrasonic over telephones, it's because they filter out that high end frequency range. So the sampling rate of most telephones is eight kilohertz and the Nyquist rate equation means that all frequencies above four kilohertz will be filtered out. This is okay for telephones because most of the audio that we can hear with our ears is below four kilohertz. And if you've ever set up a voice over IP or a PBX, um, you may have seen this U-Law codec. Um, and that's a narrowband codec that um, filters out anything that's below 300 hertz or above 3.4 kilohertz. And there's also a newer 722 wideband codec. Um, I think most cell phones have this codec included with them. And it can pick up higher frequencies. So if you wanted to test this with your own phone, you could use an online generator. And you'll hear the higher tones over your computer speakers. But if you try to play that tone over a phone, you won't hear it. Mini modem, the program, uh, is capable of several protocols. I would call them old protocols. 
So one of the first ones is the TDD protocol, which is for usually deaf people use this device or this protocol um, back before texting to communicate. And a lot of times they'd sell this particular piece of technology right here, um, which is an acoustic coupler with a built-in keyboard. And that runs at 45.5 baud. Um, if you're not familiar with baud, that's the data write bits per second. And the baud format, five in one. Uh, most cell phones have TDD built into them. Um, if you dig around in your options, there's a way to turn it on. You can actually, in a phone call, kind of go into a text mode. There's also radio teletype. Um, oh, and to highlight, here's the, uh, these are their mark and space tones for this protocol. And this is the mark and space tones for this protocol. But with radio teletype, you'll see different, people use different tones because it's really popular on radios. Same baud rate as TDD. Then there's the Bell 103, which is what I use mostly with the coupler I've used. Um, it's mark and space frequencies. It's capable of ASCII too, so it can, these two protocols with BODOT, it's all uppercase, but with ASCII you can get the lowercase. And then the Bell 202, which was capable of 1200 baud. I think you can even go up to 9600 baud, this device. But I stick in with Bell 103. So that's the acoustic coupler. Um, I used Tinkercad to design it. So it's basically just a big clunky piece of plastic that's designed to hold a speaker and a microphone. The only filament when it was printed out was available was pink, so it turned out hot pink. Um, this prototype. As you can see, there's the microphone. Here's the big speaker. Um, the majority of this coupler, the reason it's so big is to fit that speaker. I got the microphone and speaker from Adafruit. Um, I was trying to build this thing as quick as possible and in a hurry so I wasn't going to design a PCB board. And I wanted it to be USB capable. And at my house I have my own PBX setup. Um, so then my internet comes into the cable modem and then that runs to... I found a used router, a Wi-Fi router, and I flashed it with OpenWRT. And then OpenWRT has Asterisk already pre-compiled. Installed that, and then I use VOIP.ms as my provider. And then I also had to buy a analog telephone adapter that connects to this Princess phone. And this is one of my favorite phones. This phone is about 50 years old and still works just fine. So the way the setup runs is on the server side um, where the BBS is running, it runs a program called PJSUA. It's the PJ SIP user agent. I just call it PJSUA. Um, it's a command line VOIP client I'll show off. And then I wrote some shell scripts that monitor the log files from that program. And if it sees a call come in, it will start and stop my little mini modem BBS. Fortunately, Pulse Audio handles all the audio. Um, it's really complicated if you are not familiar with Linux Audio and you start going into ALSA and Jack D servers and whatnot. And then ideally, you would want the BBS server to have internet access. The client won't, but the BBS server should. And you can set this up on Amazon, I think, on the server there. Or you could also use a Raspberry Pi to run this. Um, the mini modem program, I'll show the web page real fast. There's lots of videos about how to use mini modem and lots of ways to use mini modem. <laughs> um, these are all the different options and stuff. Down here is the protocols I talked about. As for the scripts I wrote, um, this one just monitors the log file from, I'll start PJSUA with this command. And this script monitors the log file. And when it sees a call come in, it starts another script that basically just listens uh, using mini modem, listens for a command to come in. And then it sends that command to a JavaScript program I wrote. And then it echoes the output back over mini modem. And then that JavaScript script program that I wrote, it's just a simple uh, case statement. 
Um, here you start to get an idea of some of the options I put in where you can get the weather. I big into Ethereum, so I did some Ethereum account stuff. And you can post some messages. And then the client side, um, really even simpler script where it just uses mini modem to broadcast a command and then it listens for the results from the server. Um, this is an example right here where I issue the help command and this is what the menu looks like. And then in this screenshot, I ask for account info about this Ethereum account. Um, there must have been a typo right there. And then I successfully do it here and it sends back the balance and the nonce for that account. And then I exit. Ideally, the type of message I would expect to be going over this and that are probably most important is a uh, signed Ethereum transactions. If you can start sending out signed Ethereum transactions, you can start doing online banking basically. So if you live in a third world country and live on a farm and don't have access to banking, but you have a telephone line and a laptop and an acoustic coupler, well then you can start banking using cryptocurrency. Um, and then just this idea if you were to send PGP encrypted messages, um, the size difference and whatnot. So you'd want to find a protocol that doesn't have any that doesn't produce a lot of typos. Um, <clears throat> Linux and audio is really finicky. Um, a lot of the VOIP PBXs that are out there, it just seems like they degrade the audio quality. So it's really hard to get a high uh, bit rate when you're making a connection. Um, the highest I usually get without any typos is 100 BPS. Uh, ideally I want 300 and then just in general if you were to build this yourself and we're trying to improve the audio quality you need to familiarize yourself with echo cancellation and jitter latency and sampling rates and all the different features that Linux has regarding audio um, I've read in the asterisk PBX documentation that it has a module for TDD and also one for broadcasting audio to a, the uh, console, but there's not a lot of documentation on how to fill it up, um, set that up, so I just stuck with using Pulse Audio. Um, so the, the, the coupler I built is kind of clunky and whatnot, but if I were to keep building onto it, and the BBS is kind of small, limited features, I would add multiple lines and an option to send and receive emails, more cryptocurrency, gambling, everybody wants to gamble, uh, news headlines, things of that nature. And as far as the hardware changes I would make, I would make the coupler so that it would be more compatible with other types of phones, similar to this one in the corner, where it's kind of flexible and uses Velcro to strap on. And then make something that's kind of compatible with satellite phones too, but I think satellite phones have a data modem already built into them. Um, and then another cool thing that I'd like to see is um, a Raspberry Pi CyberDeck version uh, with an acoustic coupler. And then if you want it to be kind of covert, um, I think something that'd be really compatible with a lot of phones is something similar to this uh, old Tandy coupler where the cups are separate. And what you would do is create kind of like covert earmuffs, but instead of putting a speaker in one of these earmuffs, you'd put a microphone in one and then a speaker in the other. And you'd make them so they could detach and strap onto the phone like in this picture. And that would be the acoustic coupler. And if your house ever got searched by the police or something, they wouldn't know what it was. They would just think it's a regular set of headphones when you're not using it. And then what, something else I want to try doing is instead of using the phone lines to transmit this information is to do a radio version with like walkie talkies or something and also an RTL SDR and then you can make your own antennas. Uh, there's a good talk in DEF CON 30 about making your own patch antennas and then you would use the same BBS scripts but instead you use the walkie talkies and that way you could broadcast over the air. So now I'll show a demo and I'll show off the acoustic coupler and how it works. So this is the coupler. I didn't print out a, a bottom for it, so I used cardboard instead. <laughs> you see it holds the microphone and the speaker in there like that. Dude. 
is uh, start the PJ Pseudo program, which is basically a VOIP client that runs on the command line. And I'll start the, so this would be what's going on on the server side. So it's listening for incoming calls. And then on the client side, let's say you're someplace that doesn't have any internet. You'd run the client side program. Snug. And I should maybe have to do the help command. Whoopsie. So sometimes I will catch a typo and I will think the message is done. <laughs> If I try to go any higher than that, I start to get more typos. And then, so if I was curious of what my Ethereum account was, it would be, I'll try to do this with one hand. And it should return the balance. And then I can exit. And that's it. Thanks for watching.